you're looking for a new sports car, but this is out of your budget. How about a 2011 128i with some mods? How do these compare? Let's find out in this very unfair comparison. I'm here with Peter from The Drive. This is your personal 128i. You bought this car about six months ago, I think, for $11,000, and you definitely done some add-ons. What have you done to make this car better? Yeah, so I did Coney yellow dampers, uh, Ibach Pro Kit springs, uh, wave track, limited slip differential, three-stage intake manifold modification with the appropriate 130i tune from Europe, and then also a Turner intake and magnet flow exhaust. Brakes, I've got 335i brakes up front with drilled uh, Zimmermann rotors, <laughs> and then uh, 135i wheels, or I think they're Technically 135 IS wheels, but anyway, I had those refinished and put some Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tires on them. 225 up front, 245 in the rear. It's actually a very sort of similar setup to my car, which we're going to drive in a couple of minutes, but we're going to start out with this one. And then how much power did this make from the factory? So from the factory at the crank, 230 horsepower, uh, 200 pound feet. I dynoed it not too long ago and before I did the intake manifold and it was uh, two, uh, 202 I want to say at the wheels and 188 foot pounds of torque. However with the three stage intake manifold that made a big difference and I haven't re dynoed it but I mean in Europe they made 260 I want to say at the crank. The 330i, the E9330i here in the US makes 252 at the crank brand new. So we'll see but I'm hoping for somewhere near that. And this car is about 500 pounds heavier than the yeah. 8.6 behind us. So that's gonna be the biggest difference. So with that said, let's get on the road and let's take a drive on this kind of rainy day. All right, so this is the N52 engine, which loves to rev. It sounds so nice. They use this engine in a lot of different vehicles. So this course is an inline six, three liters and naturally aspirate it just like the 8.6. So there are a lot of things that are kind of similar between these two cars. Now this didn't really start life as a sports car. This sort of started life as a, just a everyday commuter, I guess, but you've turned this into something that is kind of your, your track baby, right? Yeah, totally. It's worked out really well as a dual duty track slash street car. And I really wanted to find that ideal balance. I really wanted a car that I could comfortably drive around everywhere take on road trips, but also rip on track and have fun all day long, reliably. Yeah, so it is raining today, so we can't really fly around corners here as much as I'd like to and test the cornering prowess, but the ride quality with these Coney Yellows is really very good. It's very, very composed. Yeah. This car has like very little um, excessive motion. It really feels nice over these bumps. The steering is so good in this. I love the way old school manual steering racks feel. This is a 2011 this car. 2013? 2011, yeah. 2011. So this is sort of the the pinnacle of BMW organic steering because it's, it's hydraulic and it's, it's not uh, assisted with an electric motor. And it just feels so nice. There's so much feel in here. And this car just feels really, really composed to me. I'm actually surprised how good this is for a car that is, what, 11, 12 years old now, something like that. It just really feels good. The shifter feels super nice. You can heel tow it even though I'm going up a hill. It's a really, really nice shift. You're shifting the transmission directly, which feels really good. And we're driving into the fog here, so it's going to be <laughs> difficult to give you much of a dynamic impression today. But this car just feels really, really good to me. I think we're getting into a little bit of gravel here that are using for snow. What I like about this car is everything just feels analog and organic and really, really connected compared to the 8.6, which we're going to drive in a minute. So I sort of wanted to start here to see what you can do for about $18,000 total, I think is what you spent on this. I think a little bit less than that because I bought it for 11 and then after doing the diff, suspension, all that stuff, and a lot of it myself. So you've sort of created a, a track daily build for what amounts to about half the price of my brand new H6 that I paid about $36,000 and change with tax for. This just has so much feel to it, and this just is a, a lot of fun. These, these shocks transform the car, the brakes, even though we can't really get on it today, I know are much better because this is from a more powerful 335, these brakes. And the regular brakes were like kind of weak sauce, right, on this car? Yeah, they're very weak. Um, 
decent, you know, good fluid and decent pads helped a bit, but honestly, like upgrading to this brake package up front really made a big difference. So the power to weight ratio is the biggest difference that I'm seeing here. This weighs around 3,300 pounds compared to the 8.6, which is around 2,800 pounds. And so even though this has more power and it definitely has more torque, it's just not as quick feeling, in my opinion, compared to, you know, the 8.6. I wish it was a little bit drier today than it is, but... Yeah, totally, totally. <laughs> But that's kind of how, how it is. And let me try to do a little heel toe downshift. Very nice, very easy in this car. Yeah. Because BMW has set this car up for people who want to drive manual and want a heel toe downshift. So it's very good in that respect. One thing that I, I really noticed, I think the biggest difference in the feel of a modern car versus an older car really is the fact that we get hydraulic steering yeah. in here. And this is sort of the pinnacle of BMW hydraulic steering because the next generation, they went with electric yep. after that. And so this is sort of the most developed version. And I've been driving a lot of cars with uh, hydraulic steering lately, and it makes you feel more sort of at one with the car, as, as cliche as that sound. Mm -hmm. Steering is, is to me a really, really important aspect of, of a good driver's car. And you've turned this into something that was from something not so exciting into what I think is a very, a very good driver's car indeed. So I think with that said, let's go drive the 8.6, the newer car, and see if it is worth spending twice as much money on that car versus this one. We've been talking about the value of this car versus the 128i, and if you're thinking of selling your car right now, car values are pretty good, and that's why I partnered with what I think is a great brand, Carmigo. You're trying to sell your car, you're going to a bunch of dealers, Facebook Marketplace, shouldn't be this hard. I really struggled selling my last car, which is why I have partnered up with Carmigo, who is the sponsor of today's video. And look, I only partner with brands that I actually believe in, and Carmigo makes it really simple. All you do is you upload your car to their nationwide network of dealers, and in about a business day, you're gonna get some offers. If you wanna try Carmigo, you'll get $50 off their $350 seller's fee. When you sell your car, just click the link down below. Now, back to the video. GR86. It is definitely faster. You can notice the 500 pound weight difference. And what is amazing to me is that over 10 or 11 years, we've got an engine which now is pretty much equivalent in output to the inline six. And yet this is a 2.4 liter compared to a three liter inline six. Now this does sound sort of like a blender filled with <laughs> some, uh, some bolts perhaps. Not the best sounding engine and probably the the part I like least about the vehicle, but the biggest difference really is, is the weight between these two vehicles. So this also feels really, really composed. It also has a very nice shifter indeed. Not quite as heavy as the BMW, I think. And the steering is actually pretty good for an electric rack. There's a lot more noise in here too, don't you think? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's, there's definitely less uh, sound insulation in this car, and you can feel it is lower to the road. You can feel it feels a little bit more, a little bit more sports car, I think. Yep. And it doesn't feel quite as, uh, as jewel-like, I guess, as the BMW. This, <laughs> even though the build quality is good, you can feel the, the lack of weight to some degree. It feels a little bit mm -hmm. like there's just something less substantial to the mass of this car. And I think that, mm -hmm. in my mind, is it's sort of the biggest difference. One of the things that we should point out too is that uh, even though this isn't 50-50 weight distribution, I'm not quite sure what it is, the BMW actually is 50-50. Yes, it is. But you can feel a little bit more weight over the nose of the car than this. So yep. this, I feel like the turn-in is a little bit better. And I feel like yep. because of the lack of weight, the motion control in here is a little bit, um, feels like the dampers have to do less work. Yep, I think so in my opinion, it just, the motion control is a little faster, like the movements are a little quicker yep. in yep. this car as you absorb bumps. So that is the benefit of lightness. These cars are actually quite similar and for $18,000, you've built a car which feels as good or better than this. In terms of feeling, I think it feels better okay. and it's probably, you know, nearly as capable, I think, once you put on bigger wheels and tires. I think it sort of boils down to how much money you want to spend and how much time you want to do yep. working on your own car because you put in a bunch of money but you also did all your own work too so that really yep. kept the cost down it kept the cost low yeah definitely. you know we're here so actually i do have a couple of mods in here which you can go check out in another video mm -hmm. so i've got about 3500 bucks worth of mods in here including an oil cooler which was roughly half of that and the rest of it is just some uh, alignment little bits and pieces here to make the car have a little bit more camber 
and you know we're talking about a car that is more than double the price realistically yeah. this is clearly a more modern car it definitely feels a little bit more composed it feels a little bit more sophisticated i think even though there's a little bit more noise and all the, the sound you were hearing back there was gravel against the the fender uh, fender well so there isn't a lot of insulation in here it is a little bit noisier i think the 128 feels better just sort of subjectively because of the steering mm -hmm. and because of the heaviness uh -huh. of the chassis and the shifter is awfully good in that the transmission feels really really yeah. nice in that not that there's anything wrong with this but i think that just feels better so just in terms of pure feel I think they're pretty close, but I actually think I prefer the 128 to this. Oh, wow, okay. Dollar per, per performance, number, whatever that metric is, uh, your 128 like absolutely, absolutely wins this comparison by, uh, <laughs> by uh, 100%, essentially. It's, it's, it's nearly as good for half the price, I think. Yeah. The biggest difference is the lack of power compared to this, even though it's not slow and the weight difference. You know, we haven't talked about styling. Styling is obviously pretty subjective. Oh, yeah. Everybody can go ahead and argue in the comments over the styling. I think this is a great looking car. I think the 128 is a pretty controversial car. I think a lot of people don't like that lower kind of belt line. So with that said, let's head back and let's do a final little analysis and see what's the better car for the money. There's one thing I learned from these comparisons and that is that old school hydraulic steering is always better in pretty much every case. That just really makes a big difference in the way that I perceive the car drives. For about $17,000, $18,000, Peter has put together what I think is a really amazing bargain in the performance world. Yeah, it's not the fastest car in the world. It doesn't have the N54 turbo engine. It doesn't make a huge amount of power, but it does feel organic. It feels natural. It feels analog. It's just a good driver's car. It feels really nice to drive. And that's kind of what the, this comparison is all about. At essentially double the price, the 8.6 is still a really good value in today's sports car world, but $36,000 with tax and license out the door is still a lot of money for what amounts to an entry level sports car. A BMW like this, as hard as it might be to find, represents an incredible value. And I think it is 70, 80% of the car for half the money. And I think that's a pretty amazing proposition. If you like this video, there's another one right over here. Peter, thanks for loaning me your car.